Hi, and welcome to this video on how to do OAuth authentication in AL code. Hey, my name is Eric, and uh, there's been a lot of talk about OAuth lately, especially in the Facebook uh, Business Central group. And I just remember that I actually have a uh, complete OAuth, or not complete, I guess that, that's, that's probably wrong. But I got in a OAuth um, implementation in pure AL lying in a drawer. And I thought I would find that, dust it off and show you, you guys how you could do OAuth authentication directly in AL. So let's dive right into it. Here's the good old Visual Studio code. And as you can see, hopefully this is big enough it is. As you can see, this is actually something I created in version 13. So you can carbon date your, your AL code by looking at the, the version number on the on the symbols. Um, let me start by showing you the process and then we can kind of walk into the details of how this works. So I will compile and uh, deploy here to, in this case we're running, on, we're running on a cloud sandbox because we need a public endpoint. Um, and, uh, so two things happened right away. So let's uh, dive into those for a second. I had a page in my BC that opened up. It says, please allow pop-ups from this page. And I have allowed pop-ups from uh, businesscentral.dynamics.com. And I get a LinkedIn login screen in a, in a, in a pop-up window here. So I will sign in i will sign in there we go and you see it's switched instantly to a visual studio sorry not visual studio a business central window and says authentication i feel finished please close this window and the window behind the scene changed um you can go back uh, and, and do the video in slow motion um, but just to prove that this is actually now running. I will do a query to LinkedIn to ask about myself. And I get my last name and profile picture and just, you know, a, a bunch of JSON out of uh, LinkedIn. So I'm clearly logged in. I have a token which I used. So let's rewind and, and take a look at how this actually worked. So the first page we started with was this page, the login page. And what do we have on the login page? We have a label saying, please allow pop-ups from this page. Then we have a user control. And let's find that user control. It's this one here. So we can see that this is a user control that's just one pixel. Um, and um, it has a bunch of events and, and procedures. And the first one we're looking into uh, is actually called launch URL in your window. So let's go back to the login page for a second here. And we can see that this will set up a couple of links and so on. And then at some point launch URL in your window. So that's the pop-up function. So the pop-up function is actually sitting here in uh, in the, let me actually make this a tiny bit. So it's sitting here in, in the JSON, uh, JavaScript file, sorry. Window.openUL, blank tool, blah, 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 with and hide. So we get a pop-up window from this one. Um, and what let's let's take a look at what did we actually pop up we we opened url so what is url url is our authentication endpoint in this case is linkedin.com or v2 authentication and i need a code as the response type and i supply my client id and i supply a redirect uri so what is a redirect uri so if you remember or go back and look at the, the slow-mo that when I logged in, the moment after I logged into to LinkedIn, it switched to a Business Central 
So LinkedIn actually redirected the call to back to my business central. So also sometimes called a OAuth uh, landing page. Um, so that's this URL. So sandbox page 5101. Uh, I supply a state, which is a indicator of this is actually me. And uh, then I supply a scope, and this is this is this is LinkedIn specific, saying that what access am I asking to gain access to? Uh, what features of LinkedIn I, uh, am I asking to get access to? Uh, and this is a, a perfect example of how every OAuth implementation is different because this is a LinkedIn specific thing, uh, and and OAuth on somewhere else. Do something else and do not need this. So, so you a generic uh, OAuth library might only work to the uh, security provider that it was designed for. Anyway, uh, so I supply all this. We call that in the window. So LinkedIn runs through the process of validating me, and then they send me back to this thing. But they do more because they actually supply. A, a access code, not the access token, a access code. So after the after the window has launched, we store in isolated storage some information of what to do next, and then we start a timer. And start timer is another um, feature in in the JSON. So this is actually a bonus content for this video. So I have a function called start timer that will start a JavaScript timer in the browser and it will call timer tick every second. And timer tick will then call the timer tick event in our controller then. So if we look at what happened on the login page. So after we did this, we are subscribing to the timer tick saying that if the suddenly in the isolated storage is a OAuth token uh, entry, then close the window and run something else. Until then, just wait. Um, so let's look at what happens on the redirect page. So the remember the if we if we look that the callback URL or the redirect URI was page fifty one hundred one. So this is. This page 5101. Again, it has a label say authentication finished, please close. And then it uses the same JavaScript user control. But in this case, we're using a different trigger called redirect received. So let's take a look at that. We can see that that's go in the other file. So when we're starting, we're, we will actually grab the, the the URL and grab the search parameter, see if there's an entry called code, and if there is an entry called code, call our event and supply the code and the state. So this is the same trick I used in the HTML, no, sorry, the hack the URL uh, video. So you can go back and look at that uh, for the details on, on, on that trick. Um, but that means that this one is this trigger is triggered if the page is called and we have a code and a state as parameters on on the, on the URL. So the first thing we do is going to we're we're checking the state. So we supply the state when we log in, saying this is just a random number seventeen that we supply to uh, to LinkedIn says we're logging in. Here is our state. It's a random number. So when they call us back, we can check that the state is the same as the one we just gave, the, gave them. So it's not somebody else trying to interject and just do the callback and then tr trying to do funky stuff. Uh, so in case state is, is wrong, it's, it's not matching, then uh, we're, we're not going to continue with this. Otherwise, we had the, the first page actually built the second URL for us meaning that now we want to get 
what is known as the bearer token or the authorization token. So we need to call the token endpoint with the code that we got from the first call. So we supply that code to the second call and ask, this is our code, we're logged in, please give us a authorization code or, uh, or sorry, the authorization token. Uh, with here's my secret and our ID and all that. So we do that. So we call that URL. We get that uh, that back as a uh, as a as a JSON. We go go through a JSON object and extract the token. Uh, get access, access token, and then we store that in isolated storage. And that was the remember that was the trigger. So we add that to our isolated storage, and that was the trigger here in the time saying, if that exists, then we'll close and uh, and we'll, we'll run another page. So let me do this again, and this time it's going to be in even faster because now we're already logged into, well, the browser has, uh, the Visual Studio Code has forgot who I was as a developer. Uh, if Microsoft is watching, this is how often we need to authenticate. Um, so there we go, deployed. So open the first page. It will tr throw out the, the pop-up. And since we're now already logged in, uh, in, in, in the browser, we're logged in into, uh, into LinkedIn. We didn't have to type our authentication in, in LinkedIn. So it's just went straight to the redirect uh, and um, installed the token. We got a token and we can do the, uh, the search again here. So that's how you can do OAuth. Um, and, and this is, this works with LinkedIn. The, Variants of this will work on others. So, so I think this was the first one I, I created and I had taken this code and changed into different providers because they all do it just a slight different, uh, differently. But, but this is the, this is the process that you need to go through. One, one thing you could do uh, to improve this. And, and that's what I usually do in, in other cases is that at this point, I would actually rather get the the refresh token. So refresh token is a longer lived token that can you can call just do the second call and ask with the refresh token to get an access token. Uh, so an access token typically only lives minutes, perhaps hours. Um, and you don't want if, if it, this is a web service or something like that, you don't want your users to need to go in and authenticate all the time. Uh, so you do the authentication and then you actually store the refresh token because with the refresh token, a Microsoft refresh token will live for 90 days uh, untouched. And if it's, it, if it's used, then it will live on forever. Um, so you can, you, you install the refresh token and then you use that in a second call to just say, here's my refresh token, please give me an access token. That works quite well. Anyway, guys, that was a quick video on how to do OAuth directly from uh, from AL code. So uh, I hope this helped demystifying the process. And uh, until next time, remember to subscribe to the video and uh, follow me on Twitter. And if you got comments, put them below. So uh, I try to reply to everything. And uh, well, have a wonderful day.